Well, welcome to the uh, CityU uh, Spring 2018 Faculty Development Conference. Have a little bit of delay there. Uh, my name is Garen, and I teach solely in the online classroom, uh, doing some of the more hard science psychology courses with the Bachelor of Arts in Applied Psychology program and a range of general studies math courses. Now, what we're going to cover, I want to just uh, caution that it's not edutainment. It's not theory, and it's rather just straight application of a tool that I uh, believe is is going to provide greater mobility for students. And what you can expect in the next 20 minutes is you'll, you'll be introduced to a new tool for teaching and learning um, and explore options for maximizing outcomes with that tool. And at the end, you should have some fundamentals for how to use it to increase accessibility uh, for learning. For this, for this session, please make sure you have your smartphone nearby. So um, unlike typically where we tell students to please turn your smartphone off, you, you can go ahead and turn it off, but please make sure you have it nearby on the table. Don't put it away. And if you don't have a smartphone, don't worry about it. What we cover, uh, you've got students that use smartphones, so, so you, you'll still be able to use it. Now, technology has had quite an influence on teaching and learning. As laptops replace pencils and spiral binders, we found a sort of love-hate relationship with technology. The rise in smartphone use has at least perpetuated and maybe even exacerbated it. Students are attached to their smartphones, and this is often perceived to be a distraction from teaching and learning. And I guess I'll just go ahead and ask, I was just going to ask people, have you had that experience where you turn around after you're lecturing and people are heads down in their phone? They used to be heads down in their laptop. I'd have students, I'd be up there lecturing. I know what I was talking about was not that exciting. I wasn't even excited. And they were smiling and tapping away as if they had something really of interest coming from what I was saying. Well, what tends to happen is they're heads down. They're wrapped up in their cell phone. Oh, bear with me here. A little slight technical difficulty there. Well, I want to add that this face in the media problem is not really anything new. But I'm going to keep the focus on smartphones for now. Rather than fight smartphones in the classroom, I'm saying why not outsmart the smartphone? Why not exploit the features of the smartphone for the benefit of teaching and learning? And I don't mean to try to take an online course through a two-by-two-inch screen, because that's silly. Rather, smartphones make the internet more accessible and untether users for increased mobility. Familiarity and popularity make smartphone use in the classroom an easy sell to students. And this means we have a new audiovisual tool for teaching and learning. And the rest of this workshop is going to introduce you to one option for exploiting the features of a smartphone. Are you familiar with QR codes? This is a simple matrix barcode that contains information rendered when scanned with a QR code reader. And reading the QR code just requires a free QR code app. You may have noticed QR codes all around you. We have them on billboards, museums, trolley cars, schedules are posted, stores, they're on food. You can even eat them, like on this cupcake here. So we find that pretty much anywhere we have, we want easy access to information, that where that's desired, we're going to find QR codes. And it sounds like an ideal aim in education, easy access to knowledge. So why not use QR codes in higher education? And this is sort of the impetus of this workshop. What's going to come up next is you're going to, we're going to, in the remaining time we have together, you're going to have a chance to install a QR code reader on your smartphone. View an example of how to create and save a QR code that you create. Create your own QR code of text and a website. And view some examples of, of how I've used uh, QR codes in the classroom, both online and even though I don't teach online, it's, I still have students that print stuff out so they can, they can work on it in, on, on paper. So our first stop is to install a QR code reader. Again, if you prefer to not download a QR code reader, no, don't worry about it. 
uh, what we cover, you can still use and do without ever scanning the QR code yourself. You just have to be real careful. So if you have an iPhone, you can get a QR code reader by going to the App Store. And hopefully you've picked up your cell phone by now if you're going to do this. If you have an iPhone 10, apparently you don't need to do it anymore. You can just take a picture or use your, you know, use your camera and it reads the QR codes for you. If you have an Android, you can go to Google Play. And if you have Windows Phone, you can go to Microsoft Store. Just type in QR and it's going to, if you have a populating uh, search bar, it's going to show you QR code reader. You can just choose any one of them. Choose a highly rated one. I use Norton Snap. I like Norton. So after you've found the QR code reader, and you probably already found one, go ahead and download it, install it, and then you have a QR code in front of you. Scan it, and it's going to tell you how good you did in downloading and installing and operating the QR code reader. So I'm going to pause just a moment as I talk a little bit longer. And if anybody's having difficulty finding the QR code reader, uh, you know, Either raise your hand or put a text little message there in the text box. Okay, then we'll move on. And if you found out that you're, you're still kind of working with it, don't worry. I'm going to talk a little bit about the website we're going to use now that we're armed with a QR code reader where we can test our QR codes. We'll be using the QR code generator page, and it's a real simple one. There are some rather complicated or more complex QR code generators out there. Um, you tend to have to pay for them. This is free. Uh, but don't you don't have to go to there right now because I'm going to send a URL here in just a bit. I want to show you some of the features so when we get on there, if you're anything like me, I like to go explore and pretty soon I'm lost. Okay. Um, well, the first thing is this highlighted box I had uh, that I have here. These are the free features of the website. You can do uh, QR codes for text, URL, your contact information, a phone number. If you don't want to post a phone number for everyone to see, QR code, snap it. And SMS, which I, I think we're kind of phasing out of a little bit more, more and more. The next, the section below it is where you enter the text. And that's just to let you know that that's what you're looking for. It's a little bit, it's a little bit uh, difficult to see sometimes. The three little dots uh, and ver vertical dots, that just lets you resize your QR code. And you can do a custom. You can do 1,000 pixels. You can do 10,000 pixels if you want. It's only going to render it on your screen in small, but then you can print it off if you have paper that size. And finally, when you go to save your QR code, you get a little pop-up window, put a file name in. I save, I save my QR codes to my desktop so I can find them pretty easily. And I save them in PNG, but you have two other options depending upon um, what type image style you like. So now's the time I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to post. Now that I've oriented you to there, I'm going to move pretty quickly here. Here's a, here's a link to the QR code generator page. And so I just posted it in the text box window there, but you can also uh, copy it right there. So now, like I said, I've shared it. Um, and I want to make sure I caught up here. So you open, if you have it, please open the website in your, a different browser. Uh, I think it automatically does it. At least mine does in Firefox. But I want to make sure you can still hear me uh, while, you're, while you're working on it. Now, you want to make sure that when you've arrived at the page for, for this presentation that the text, the free text, you see my little finger up there? The free text has the orange underline underneath it. This tells you that that's what you're going to be generating. And then what, I, what, you, what, you, what you want to do is uh, type in whatever you'd like. I have in here it says this is my first QR code. You can put in whatever you like. And as you do that, as you type, you're going to notice the QR code itself is going to change. Each time you type a letter, the bar matrix is, is uh, creating the, anyway, it's a unique feature that when it reads it, it extracts and, and renders that information. So now that you, once you type it in there, take your QR code reader and scan it before you save it. What comes back to your phone in a text, it's just going to be a little text box. It's going to say, it should say this is my first QR code or whatever you put in there. 
maybe this is a great workshop, whatever. And so if it's not, then you want to come up here and make sure that you typed in exactly what you want. Then go ahead and hit save. You can see, practice saving it to your desktop or wherever you'd like to. And then know that you can just render, you can paste these wherever you want that you would paste an image in a document, on a website. So that's the text. Now how about the URL? If you go back up here and click on the URL, you're going to see your little orange line underneath there. You're going to get a little enter URL box. Then you can just copy the address up here, unless you have something, an address you'd like. Type the address in or paste it. You can open up the window on a different window, paste it, makes it easy. Then scan the QR code with your QR code reader. This should, depending upon your QR code reader, will, will first warn you. Uh, Norton Snap warns you, says, would you like to go to this page? Um, but otherwise, it will ask you to navigate. Now you're able to navigate to the page just using the QR code. So you can go ahead and save that one if you'd like. And again, it can be you, it can, you just post that, you just, I'm sorry, you just save that as an image wherever you want to put it. So I wanted to show you just a few examples. It's like, what, what, what can we do with these? Well, on the Math Tutoring Center that we have here at CityU that started up recently, we have I, the, we, I have a QR code. Now, right now, you hopefully, I know somebody must have already scanned that. They've already gone to the Vimeo page and you know, on, their, on, their, on their cell phone. So what makes this convenient is, have you ever had one of those pages that scrolls forever and ever? And the video that you're watching that's supposed to be educated, providing you some sort of guidance, is gone. It's off the page. Well, now you have it. You, you, you put it wherever you want to. You got on your cell phone. You can scroll about. You are free to roam about the page. You can get a, get a glass of water if you want to and still pay attention to the video. Now, I have on here scan or click. Click or scan is what it actually says. So if you're working on a laptop you just are one of those uh, uh, tablets, you just reach over there and tap that with your finger. It's hyperlinked. You just highlight it on the page in your, in your editor window and you hyperlink it. So even on, if I, if I was on a web page here, I could just click on it. Can't do it here. This is to collaborate. And it will take me there. So that's one way you can add different features to the QR code. So it's not just scan, but also click. I use them in discussion boards. Uh, this is an example where I have a topic in a senior seminar. We were developing a, we were developing a topic. I had a webinar on top, developing the topic. I recorded it. I just posted it. Students can then scan it or they can click it again. You see it clicks, it opens it up in a new window. So the convenient part is it take, doesn't take up a whole lot of room and it's on their phone. So they're not needing to type in the URL. They're just scanning it. And I find, I guess, I'm assuming if I make it easier for them, they might use it more often. So those are a couple that are online. But I mentioned, and I'll mention it here because I think I didn't say it, the golden opportunity is bringing, this is an example of questions I have on a calculus homework. Students are able to, now you don't worry, I'm not, uh, you're not going to get a video on calculus. These are just samples to show you how I use it. Is that the student can print their homework off, shove it in the bag, head off to work. And while they're working on their homework, and they say, I really don't remember the steps here. I have videos that provide them with the steps. They take out their smartphone, they snap it right there on their, on, their, on their phone. They're getting some guidance of how to get started in working this problem. And then they can go to the next one. Small, you'll notice that if you scan this, you just got to move your phone closer to it. And this is a size 50 pixels. It doesn't take up much room at all. And you have your way to provide students a little nudge, a little tip, maybe a word of encouragement. I also use it when I have more developed activities, like this one for my statistics course. And in this case, for the chi-square test, it's, it's rather complex. We have hypothesis testing. So part one, they're not even working on the worksheet. They take the smartphone off, or they take the smartphone, they scan the QR code, and they're now, they're, remember, it's a piece of paper. 
It's a piece of paper that one time had no connection to the internet. You help a piece of paper, say, can I connect to the internet? You say, no, put a QR code on there. You've got connection to the internet. And even if you have a tablet or you got an iPad, if it has a QR code reader, you just hold that up there and you're watching it on your video, on your, on your computer. So in this case, students, this is an example where on part two, they're working through a, a chi-square test of hypothesis testing with a bag of M&Ms, and it shows them an example. So it helps them figure out how to, what to fill in, how to calculate everything, get down. And then finally, part three, when they get there, they're interpreting the test. So this is how, I think this is the golden, uh, this, is, this, this is just out, uh, outstanding. Students are often wanting to print off their homework. Uh, people that work for Boeing, um, other companies that say you do not use the computer for your score. Well, with QR codes on a piece of paper, they're able to take their homework on their lunch hour, do their homework, because many of them are. They're trying to squeeze it in in spots where they don't want to walk around their laptop, shove the piece of paper in their hand, got the QR code, and wherever they're at, they take a snap, they're able to do their homework. So these are just a couple of options. Now, what I wanted to do I kind of blasted through this a little faster than I did yesterday. And so I wanted to say this, you know, just does anybody have a thought about how they might be able to use QR codes if you think you're able to? There's a microphone down there. So if you don't want to tape it out, just hit it and you can speak it. Anybody got any ideas how they might use these? Yeah, that kind of puts people on the spot, doesn't it? Okay, uh, fair enough, fair enough. I introduced you to QR codes, even though you probably used them. You didn't think you were going to have to figure out how to use them. But I'm hoping that what I've done is introduced you to QR codes. This is not my idea. I came across it in an online textbook, and I said, that is brilliant. So, um, yeah, they said you could type them there, too, if you didn't want to hit that microphone thing. Now, in a little bit of review, I guess I'm going to leave you with QR codes are not difficult to generate. For the little bit of time it takes, the accessibility and mobility of teaching and learning, it, you go to the beach, take it on vacation with you. It doesn't matter. You can take it wherever you want to. The QR code links, or it can be as simple as scan of the code, or hybrid links that allow you to navigate by clicking. Readers are free and rather simple to use. And smartphones then can be tools to enhance learning, improve teaching and learning for increasingly mobile online students, which means instead of putting your phones away, everybody, put them on your desk. We're going to use them. So I want to thank you. I am not going to be at the panel tonight. I'm on the East Coast, and so it's late. It's going to be late in the evening by then. And uh, but if you have any questions, if you need any help with the QR codes, want some other examples, um, there's my email. Please feel free to uh, fire off an email and I will respond. So thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Karen, um, and this is Katrina, uh, the moderator for this room. I just put out a link, um, uh, a, a evaluation link for this presentation. Um, it will take you maybe less than a minute to fill it out, and if you could provide feedback and comments on this presentation, we would greatly appreciate it. And um, as Karen uh, mentioned, if you have any questions, um, about his presentation, you can just email him directly. And um, again, thank you very much for attending this presentation. Uh, you will have a five-minute break now. And the next presentation will start at um, 